you're watching Cartel TV and I'm Jenny and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Utes are definitely gaining popularity as everyday cars and in light of that becoming more and more plush. I mean doesn't everyone want a limo and a workhorse all in one? In the good old days there were a few pretty specific boxes a ute had to tick. It was useless without them. Everything else was a bonus, but definitely not essential. Having in mind that utes were mostly used as working machines, price and ability were more important than stylishness of the cabin, for example. And although the Triton is still a bit in those good old days, it's not dated or bad or ugly. It is simply focused on those traditional ute values rather than bling, and it's also more affordable. And I feel like Mitsubishi understands this all too well. And today I'm reviewing the 2020 Mitsubishi Triton Triton GLX Plus Dual Cab 4x4. In the weirdly complicated world of Triton trim level combinations, it means that it's not really the most basic one. That would be the GLX. But it is also not plush in any way. It has all the capability and practicality of a true ute with a few additions thrown in to make it stand out from the basic trim. Now before we move on, I have to let you know that there are four trim levels with this being the second lowest. And an additional one called Toby Price Edition, which is limited in numbers. There are also single, cloud cab and dual cab bodies, which combined with the trims, drive options and gearboxes give 22 variants of the Triton to choose from. So even if you really don't like this one, there are loads to shop around. Mitsubishi does offer plusher interiors, better exteriors and more advanced 4x4 systems in the top trim levels, but I'm glad that I have this one. Now it's pretty hard for the top trims to compete with the offerings from say Ford or Toyota, but where the GLX Plus sits, it's very competitive. On the styling front, well, this is an affordable ute. And while it does look like it, I also think it has a much meaner and more aggressive front than you get with a lot of the other competitors. The slanted headlights and these halogen DRLs are particularly modern. Now let's talk about the bonnet, or more so what's underneath it. The engine's a 2.4 litre inline Ford diesel with variable valve timing that produces 133 kilowatts and 430 newton metres of torque from 2,500 revs. Officially, it consumes 8.6 litres per 100 kilometres and it packs a six speed automatic with a manual shift mode. And of course, there's a low range transfer box and a rear diff lock in this trim. There's also a two wheel drive version and a manual car to drop the price even lower if you don't need the extra capability of the 4x4. The drive in the Triton, it's, well, how can I say, predictable. On the road, the latest model is a pretty noticeable improvement over the bumpy ride of its predecessor. Suspension tune got a big revision last year and it shows, or should I say feels. The front is double wishbone with coil spring and stabilizer bar and the rear is the good old leaf spring. The revision made the ride a lot more composed and comfortable, even when the load bed is completely empty. However, you should not expect car-like comfort or behavior and top U offerings are also noticeably better in this respect than the Triton GLX. So yeah, it's better than the old version. And I have to say, compared to a lot of other utes that I've driven, it's really comfortable. For nicely tucked into my seat, ready for a long, slow drive. But once again, this is definitely not primary for a vehicle like this. For example, a bit rougher ride also means more payload and with 945 kilograms in this respect, the Triton definitely delivers. Unbraked and brake towing capacities are at 750 and 3,100 kilograms respectively. And the max tow ball load is 310 kilograms. In short, the engine's good enough. And to properly test the Triton, we sent it out to a good old fashioned South Australian cattle farm. It weighs 1,955 kilograms and it can carry a lot, so the engine is definitely not zippy in any way. It pulls evenly and that's really nice. The top torque is available from 2,500 revs, so that's okay, although not stunningly low. Off-road, the Triton was good enough for all the challenges we put it through on the farm. The muddy grass, cow pies and hills all prove just a playful paddock for the Triton to frolic in. And this version gets rear diff lock and low range and has that nice linear, predictable power builder. It's by no means the best off-roader out there, but most people will get more than they need in this respect with the Triton. Have to point out that the GLX Plus gets rear diff lock, but only from 2020 onwards. So make sure that the one you're buying has it before you get it. Approached angle is 30 degrees, departure angle 22, and breakover angle is 24 degrees. 
Ground clearance is at 205 millimeters and the turning circle 11.8 meters. Another good thing for off-roading is the Triton's maneuverability as it's quite narrow and has a wheelbase of 3,000 millimeters. This is what makes it unsettled when cornering at high speeds when loaded, but it helps with off-road maneuverability. I will mention that higher trim levels get a more advanced 4x4 system. If there's one thing I would like to see across the range, it is that. If for no other reason than for the addition of centre diff, I did find that when accelerating from a stopped position, the Triton was quite underpowered. So I guess the engine was a little sluggish for my liking. Now let's get inside. So I actually don't mind the design of the interior and the dash area here. The plastics, of course, are a bit underwhelming, but you know, if we compare them to the higher end utes, they're always gonna be. Hard plastics are predictably present, but the fit and finish are good. Now in the world of ute practicality, the latter is far more important. So these vehicles definitely designed to take some abuse. So at least scratching this plastic does not happen easily. In fact, it kind of feels like it might scratch you back. Yeah. As usual, I like the easy to use large knobs and buttons as you would hope for and need in any ute, but I really just wish there was a volume dial rather than these touchscreen buttons. <laughs> oh, and the added Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is an added bonus. I think any working person is gonna welcome how quick and easy the connectivity is in this ute. All the controls are on the central console or on the steering wheel, so everything should be nice and easy to reach. There's plenty of storage, including of course your glove box, it's got bottle holders and cup holders, sunglass holder, um, rest, including a nice little cord slot there, and this space uh, in front of the gear stick. But I do have to say, I expected more open surfaces when you could just put things without storing them away. You know, like that space you get sometimes on top of the dash. I mean, it's definitely not like the Triton is lacking in storage, but some more practical, immediate places to store things would be nice. Now, the rear part of the cabin doesn't exactly scream special but it does have some good comfort. The back seat's actually quite comfortable back here. Headroom's okay, legroom is not the greatest, but it's definitely decent. I like that it feels like you've got a bit of lumbar support. The middle seat, however, um, the armrest would dig into the passenger in the middle, but it's handy for the other two. You've got your cup holders, yeah, and an armrest there, so that's nice. What's pretty cool on the rear for the GLX Plus in 2020 are these roof air vents. They take the cooled air from the front and send it to the back. Now this was available in the GLS trim before, but now we're getting it in lower trims. Wow! The cargo area in this model is 1520 millimeters long and 1470 millimeters wide. The body floor is 850 millimetres from the ground and the height of the cargo area is 475 millimetres. Of course, higher trim levels do have a lot more in terms of safety, but the GLX Plus has a fair amount of safety features itself. It comes with lane departure warning, forward collision mitigation system with pedestrian detection, ABS, EBD, active stability control, active traction control, hillside assist, emergency brake assist, auto dimming rear view mirror, cruise control, rain sensors, dusk sensing headlights, rear parking sensors and rear view camera, two isofix and two top tether points, seven airbags including curtain and driver knee, brake override system, trailer stability assist and adjustable speed limiter. So if you need a ute and you buy a Triton, you're not gonna go wrong. It's been a beloved ute for decades and that's because it ticks all the right boxes for a very affordable price. The GLX Plus Triton with the sterling silver paint will cost you just over 42,000 drive away. The top tier GLS Premium is still priced at just under 50,000 drive away. Like I said, this pricing is very, very competitive and there's one main reason why. If you are looking for an affordable ute, the Triton is definitely not your only choice. There are some Chinese and South Korean models out there that are even more affordable. And with all the reluctance of our buyers, they are pretty good especially having in mind the price, and they are cheaper than the Triton. But the Triton is so close to them in terms of pricing that it single-handedly destroys their sales. It's been around for ages, so there's the peace of mind that the newcomers can just not compete with. And all the features that you get really justify the small price increase. And if that's not enough, you've got to love that seven-year warranty. I also love that we got the second lowest trim. 
Yes, the top trims definitely have more to offer in terms of safety, off-roadability and interior quality, but this one really underpins just how good value for money the Triton truly is. Truly, madly, deeply, Triton. And thanks again for watching Cartel TV. Now, what is your pick of the Utes? What's your favorite one? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next time.